In our last video, we took a long time to set up parts one and two of task number two. In particular, cleaning up the spreadsheet so that it looks beautiful and that all the countries match and that there's no empty spots and that the titling is all nicely done. That takes some time, so you have to take a good long while to do it and make sure that everything is nice and beautiful and all your countries match up and there's double data points. And then you have to move it so that the two columns are right next to each other. That pays big dividends now because it makes it so that the next portions are actually pretty quick and easy. But if you didn't take the time to do that in the last video, then everything from this point on will be wrong. So make sure that you have it all nice and organized, the mortality and life expectancy are right next to each other, and everything is all lined up with no empty spots. Okay, so now we look at task number three, or part number three of task two, excuse me. So we're going to create a scatter plot. We're going to develop it, include its equation and R-squared value. We're also going to calculate the slope, the intercept, and the R and R-squared values with Excel, which actually is pretty quick and easy, and it'll help you for the next portion down below. All right, so let's start with making a scatter plot. Because I have this all organized and the data points are right next to each other, all I have to do is highlight columns B and C. And you can do that by moving your cursor up here next to the B and scrolling over to the right to C so that they're nice and highlighted. Click on the Insert menu, and you want to click over here on the Scattered Gram. It looks like a scatter plot. And then I select number one in the top left corner, which is the scatter plot. And there you have it. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to kind of move it over so I've got some room to groove right here. And I'm going to label this. So I'm going to double click up here and label it. Oop, I don't like that at all. Hold on. Let me move over. I'm using that slider bar down here to kind of move over. And I'm going to double click on here and say part three, scatter diagram or scatter plot, whichever way you want to call it, of infant mortality versus life expectancy in, and then I'm putting my year, which is 1960. Now you have the same options you had before when we were messing around with histograms. So if I click up here, I can click on the little plus sign and add access titles, or I could do it over here and add chart elements. If you're working from an older version of Excel, you might want to right click and adding chart elements might be an option here in this menu. But I'm going to add chart elements over here on the left, access title, primary is a horizontal, primary vertical, that's an option. Or just click on the little plus sign, click access titles. And then I want to label these. So this is the infant mortality. And then I want to think about what this was. This was a rate per 1,000 births, I believe. Let me go back and double check that. That's why I kept the about mortality in there. So right here, it was the rate per 1,000 births. So that's my unit. So I'm going to make sure that I put that right there, rate per 1,000 births. Then I go click on my Y axis label, and I type life expectancy, parentheses, and I'll give it years. Right. So again, I can click on about life expectancy, and I can see that it's talking about years right there. Oop. It said years right up in there. So I'm going to use that for my labeling of my scatter plot. And remember, you can make the scatter plot larger. You can fuss with the colors if you want. If you click on the, the points, you can go over here to the little um, paint bucket, and you can change what they look like. You can change the marker color. So I can make it, so I click on the marker color, make them orange, if I so desire. And I can change the edge so that they're red. I can make it so that the dots are red. I can fuss around with any of this. I want to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I've got this graph. This is wonderful. But what I don't have is what it was asking me for, which is a trend line and a R squared value. So if I click on the chart elements up in the top corner, or if I click on the dots and I right click on the dots, either way you can get to add trend line. So either add trend line by right clicking on the dots, selecting add trend line, or if you're in the new version of Excel, you have this little plus sign and you can click add trend line right here. And we want a linear trend line, which is fine. And then you can mess around with that line. If you click on the line, you can say, okay, I, I don't mind it being blue. I want to pick a bolder blue but I want it to be too thick, and I don't want it to be dashed. I want it to be solid. 
and it'll draw it solid. It'll draw it whatever color and type you like. So you can mess around with your colors in there. So I made it red and blue. I made it patriotic. There you go. So you can fuss around with that. Down at the bottom, sorry, not the bottom of the paint bucket. The paint bucket area is, you know, basically going to color and change your lines and change how thick things are, that kind of thing. That's what that's going to do. But if I click on the little bar over here, then that gives me different options. So I can see I've selected a linear trend line. And down here I want to click Display Equation and Display R Squared. And you can actually pick this box up. If I let my mouse hover over this, it turns into a box and I could kind of move it over. And I'm thinking that's really very hard to see. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change my font size to 14 and I'm going to make it bold. So I'm, I've clicked on this box and I can fuss around with how I want it to look, right, and where I want it to be. And I can shift it around. But I have the equation of the line, y equals yada yada yada, and I have the r squared value right there. Alright, so we're done with that portion. It's as simple as that. Now keep in mind, if you're on an older version of Excel, you actually have these options. They just might not be over here in this right-hand menu. They might show up when you right-click and mess around with playing with your options. Format chart area right there. Right, So it'll show up as a little dialog box rather than showing up over here on the right. I'm going to close this down because I don't want it anymore. And that'll make it disappear so I've got room to work on the rest of my stuff. So there's part three. I want to continue part three as well down here. I want some calculations. So, and I'm running into my issue from that I had before. I'm going to bold this and make it size, I don't know, 14 font. And you can see it's messing around with this row. So the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to highlight a bunch of cells here and I'm going to merge and center. And then I'm going to go back to this row, turn my cursor into a double-sided arrow, either at the top of 23 or the bottom. Oh, no, the bottom. And there it is. And that made it a little bit smaller, a little bit narrower. If you want, you can highlight a bunch of columns. Click Merge and Center, or bun a bunch of cells. And then that'll keep this row over here looking nice, but I made all of this the title. All right, now I'm going to label some things here. I want the slope. I want the y-intercept, and I'm making this bold for my own benefit. And there it's messing around with my row size again. So what I can do is I can merge and center, but I'm going to do it to both of them because I want them all to be like that. And then I want my r value. I'm going to merge and center right here, r, and then I'm going to merge and center right here and say r squared. Now we already know what they are because we can see what some of these things are from the graph above, but this is another way you can find them if you don't want to actually go to the trouble of having a um, graph drawn. And just because it's bugging me, I'm making this 12 point font over here, but it's making all of this get messed up, so I'm actually going to highlight all of these columns and return them into 12 point font as well. And then that might need, I need to resize my columns, but I can see everything nice and big now. All right, so moving back down here to this portion. I added in this bit about finding the slope. So here's how you do this. Equals slope. Believe it or not, it's a command. Now the one weird thing about it is it goes backwards. You want your Y value column first, then your X value. So I want to tell it where my Y values are, which is in cell C2. I'm going to drag down to the bottom. And for me, it ends at cell C146. And so it says it right there, C2 colon C146. That's the Y values, comma. And then the X values are cells B2 to B146. And I'm going to tell you right now, having all this organized ahead of time makes this all work beautifully. Close my parentheses, enter. And there you go. It knows the slope. It knows that it is negative 0.193. Handy, don't you think? And notice it matches the value that you were given right there in the graph, negative 0.1934. But it finds it a different way, and that can be quite useful. Um, for, for starters, these values down here are easier to manipulate into formulas.
All right, now for intercept, for the y-intercept, the command is equals intercept. Oh, there it is, I-N-T-E-R, and it's just showing up right there, intercept. When that happens, by the way, when it starts writing for you, I-N-T-E-R-cept, if I hit the tab button, it automatically fills in the formula. And now I just want to tell it the cells again. So C2 colon C146, I remember those are my data points, comma, B2 colon B146. So that put the Y values in first, which is column C, then the X values. Enter. And there's the Y intercept right there. Now the R value is not found here, hint, 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 it might be helpful to know how to do this for a later question in the analysis portion. So to do that, you type equals correlation, C-O-R-R-E-L is the command. And then again, tell it the C, actually I couldn't remember, but it doesn't actually matter which one you put in first. You can either put in your C's first or your B's first. It won't make any difference because we're doing a simple linear regression here. So I'm actually going to keep it consistent. C2 colon C146 comma B2 colon B146. Close my parentheses. There's my R value, which might come in handy for a later question. Hint, hint, hint. Now the R squared value is literally that number squared, and I don't think there's actually a command for it. There probably is somewhere, but we don't need it because we know that it's the value we just found squared. So if I type equals and click on my previous cell where the R value is, so in my case it's in column I, row number 27, and then I tell it to square it by hitting shift 6, which puts the little caret symbol in there, and tell it to enter. It will square it and there's my R squared value, which indeed does match the R squared value that I have up here in my graph. All right, so there are those calculations done for you. So we have a graph and we have a, the calculations all done. Don't forget you can click on these titles and make them a little bit larger if it's a little hard to read especially since your instructor might have old eyes like mine, or you can make them bold or unbold, that kind of thing. And then you can have these calculations done down here. I'm actually going to click a little box and have that all be in there, so that way it's nice and easy to find. Don't forget to save before you go any further. It would be terrible to have done all of this work and get it all lost for nothing.